okay, again, you know, what a season. I'm sure it's one you'll never forget. Yeah, 2017 was awesome. Uh, it tested the whole team physically and mentally. We put a lot of hours, a lot of miles up and down the highway, traveling to different racetracks, and uh, Myrtle Beach being one of those. And it was, uh, it was just an honor to, to, to race so much and have the success we did. I tried not to look at them. I couldn't help but see them for people posting it and sending it to you. But um, I just tried to do the best job that we could do to win races. And it, it was tight. I mean, it was the closest battle I've been in for a national title. Um, right down to the wire, waiting to get that phone call from George Silberman at NASCAR. And uh, it, it definitely uh, was stressful. Um, it was it's fun looking back on it now. At the time, it was very stressful. But... Uh, you know, a lot of times when the pressure is on, that's when we perform the best and uh, we were able to rise to the top. It was tough because, you know, we left the racetrack uh, after having such a big weekend and, and winning at all those different racetracks. And we had some big wins and we, we went into the final weekend feeling pretty good about it. And um, he ended up getting beat in the first race. So it was like a huge relief, you know, and... Uh, we, we thought, you know, well, it's definitely done. Well, the guy that beat him got thrown out after the race, failed post-race inspection, and um, made it really interesting, brought it within where it was going to be within a few points. And uh, I sure was glad to get that phone call. Uh, we joked here at the shop uh, about texting uh, George Silverman uh, and, and asking if he lost my number as a, as a joke, you know. But... Uh, it was uh, it was definitely an awesome phone call. I'll never forget it. I was out there in the shop parking lot, and uh, I, I had a setup book in my hand. We were preparing for Martinsville, and I threw that thing in the air just as high as it would go. And uh, it was uh, it was it was an awesome phone call. I, you know, it, it's definitely tough. It's a it's a tough sport to break into. This is um, it doesn't work like baseball or basketball or, or football where where talent takes you to the next level it, it takes so much money now and we live in a time where um, it's easier for the team owners to hire drivers that have dads that own fortune 500 companies or have close associations with a fortune 500 company and and that's that's a sad part a sad fact of it um, it doesn't take away the love I have for the sport um, in, in no way but it is extremely tough and challenging as a driver um, to know that it's almost impossible to reach to the top without without someone backing you. Um, I'm not going to say it is impossible because uh, with you know God, anything's possible and, and stuff happens. But it, it is definitely a rarity these days to to see just talent talented driver with not any backing make it to the next level. Um, very, 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 uh, very unlikely to see this day and time. Um, now, now you mentioned the next level. Um, you know, I've I've worked with the sprint car guys and the late model guy, the guys on dirt. Um, do you think the talent is better there, um, or 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 you think it's just about you know the money part, where everyone's got to have the money? You've got good drivers all the way to the top. I mean, uh, Jimmy Johnson, I, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't want to face against him at Chicago or California or anywhere. You know, uh, he's, he's just that talented. But there's guys in this NASCAR late model series that will never get a shot that could beat Jimmy Johnson on a weekly basis. They could beat Carl Edwards, Denny Hamlin. Um, it's so many guys out there that, that have a talent to do it, but will never be put in that position. So in my opinion, the NASCAR Wheeling All-American Series is one of the most challenging and most tough series you'll ever be. I invite anybody to come race against Philip Morris and Chad McCombie and Peyton Sellers, Matt Bolin, uh, Timothy Peters, uh, myself, Justin Milliken. I mean, it, it's, it's a tough tough series and um, very tough to win races in it and it, and it's just a family oriented deal you know you can have your family in the pits you can spend time with them during the week and and still make it to the racetrack on a weekend so 
Um, to me, this is one of the best series that NASCAR has, and, um, and the talent level is definitely um, just as high as any other series that's above us. You know, in, in our world, Lee, you know, you're a household name. You know, and anywhere you go to Martinsville, to, to Myrtle Beach, even up, up north. Uh, um, would you like, a, would you have liked a chance at, 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 at the cup, you know, just so you, so you can get yourself out and get a name on that national realm and show your skills off? Yeah, for sure. Um you know, somebody asked me, you know, if you raced in the 80s, would, you, uh, would your name be synonymous as Earnhardt or Petty? And I think, you know, that's far-fetched to say because those names are so great in the sport. But I think my name would be out there more. Um, we would be a name that people recognize on Sunday. And uh, it just wasn't quite, uh, you know, wasn't born at that time. It, was, it just wasn't in the plan. Um, and there's several other drivers out there that, that could have had that same destiny. And, um it's tough because sometimes you feel like, you know, that you belong there. Um, you belong at, uh, to have a shot at doing something bigger. Uh, but I've had peace uh, of mind over the last couple of years of where I'm at. I'm happy with my family. I'm happy with our, my job, my work. I'm happy here at the shop. Um, I have great friends that support us. and. Uh, you know, to have that peace of mind and, and have that happiness, it, it takes that burden of, man, I'll never make it to the next level away, and it makes everything, uh, makes you not ever, not really think about it anymore. Four times champ. Now you, now you realize to etch your name firmly in the record books, you got to win one more. How much is in the tank for, for Lee? You know, um, Four is just unbelievable to Ty Philip Morris, um, which to me is one of the all-time greats um, behind the wheel. And to be one behind Larry Phillips, um, who's a Hall of Fame nominee, it's, uh, it's a pretty incredible accomplishment, especially at my age, 29 years old. I uh, feel like I've got a long career left. You know, Phillips in his 50s is still very, very dominant and could win a national championship also. And I, I think that... Um, me having this much left in me, it's a real possibility to make a real big impact on this series and this division. And I've won this championship in multiple formats. Um, the points formats have changed. Um, the, the bonus points from starting 10th has changed. So I've won this championship through numerous changes and rule changes with NASCAR. And that makes it special to me too. It's not like we won it with one system. We've won it multiple ways. And, uh, very rewarding to, to win each one that I've won. Uh, four just seems unreal um, to, to, to be with those names. And I sure would like to get one or two more. Um, you know, everybody wants to break a record. Um, and that would be a very cool and special record for me to, to try to achieve. Uh, they, they're definitely gonna see a show. Um, we're gonna be three wide, probably four wide a few times. Uh, it's gonna be some beating and banging when it gets down to the end, I uh, plan to have it number five up front. So uh, if they've uh, never watched this race, um, I think they're going to be in for a great, uh, great treat. So it's a lot of talented drivers out there. It's going to be a tough race to win, but uh, I can guarantee you number five is going to be trying hard.